So do you not make notes while you're eating? And mm, Very rarely. I kind of work on the basis that if you literally can't remember what was on the plate, that tells you almost everything you need to know about the dish. Unless one of my companions says something extremely witty or clever, and then I steal it without attribution, <laughs> which is the price they pay for me buying their lunch. Hello, Jay. The legendary Matthew Wyatt. It's a, an <laughs> honour to sit at your table. That's a lovely thing to say. Do you mean that? No, 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 no. I'm shallow, but I think you might like it, so I just wanted to flatter you. <laughs> so, welcome to Manchester. Thank you. How was your journey in? Um, uh, Avanti West Coast, on time. Or, or on near, time? Or near enough on time. Well, that's absolutely unheard of. Uh, I know, I know. So, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling blessed. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hello. How are um, you? Yeah, I'm going to order. Do you want a drink? I'll have a white coffee. White Americano, white please. Americano. Black sure. coffee for me, please. Uh, food? You order. I might pick up some of it. Just going to have a little pick. Well, I think I need to have one of these Rolos. Oh, good show. I keep seeing those. Yes. And uh, probably go for the French toast. It's good big, show. the French toast, isn't it? It is. It's perfect for sharing. There you go, Jay. Well, OK. So, That's lovely. Thank lovely. you. Why didn't you order some food for yourself? Um, because I am reviewing in your fair city at lunchtime, and despite what I look like, <laughs> I don't have a limitless appetite. There is a limit to what I can eat, yeah. and I think it's only fair on the restaurant that I'm visiting that I am match fit. Then again, when this stuff arrives in front of me, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> How long have you been in the game now? How long have you been reviewing restaurants? I have been reviewing restaurants for The Observer, the finest Liberal Sunday newspaper in the world. I'd agree. And I'll punch anyone who argues. Since 1999. So... Wow. Yeah. 24 years? 20, uh, 20, 24 years this year. Wow. That's a long time. It is a long time and it was never the plan. There was a moment at the 10th anniversary where I said to my Darling wife, I think maybe I should kick this into touch and go back to being a proper journalist. 14 years ago, you said yeah, that. 14 years ago. And she said, you won't. She was right. <laughs> she was, yeah, they always are. I said as we came out of that first major period of lockdown in 2020 that I was swearing off negative reviews. I did say there will be a time when this comes to an end, and it came to an end with a, a pop-up on the roof of the Dorchester Hotel. Okay. And I, I think the thing that caught my eye was that the cheapest bottle of wine was something like 85 quid for a bottle that retailed at 10. That's not on. Not on. And I thought, right, ah, it's time. <laughs> He's back. And I went up there and the food was appalling and that wine was appalling and everything was appalling. You have that power. One negative review in an article from you do you not agree with that? No, I don't. I think bad restaurants fail all by themselves. Yeah. I think we're the doctors who diagnose the disease. We're not the assassins with the stiletto. That's a lovely way of putting it. Maybe we're the pallbearers carrying out the coffin. <laughs> you see, I've given certain places bad reviews, and they have sailed on regardless of what Rayner has to say. Well, they're getting publicity out of it still, aren't they? There was a terrific one, um, a restaurant called Beast. And Beast, the premise was you can have whatever you like as long as it's steak or king crab, or both. No chips, because they didn't do carbs, no bread. What? Uh, I mean, it was all weird. And you had to sit at communal tables and pay ridiculous amounts of money and, and wrote this coruscating review, which included, I'm gonna quote myself now, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, shameful, fine. but it included the line, you know, the, the steak was so expensive at this price, they should lead the animal into the room and install it under the table so it can pleasure me while I eat. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you walked in on that sentence, pleasure me while oh, I eat. That was welcome. just what you got. <laughs> Thank you very much. No so this, Jay, you, you can see what that is already, can't you? It's a giant um, Rolo other confectionery is available. Well, look, you've done it now, haven't you? I've got coffee and um, I, I, I think... I knew you wouldn't last yeah. long. I'm, I'm not eating, I'm not eating. I'm not eating, I'm not eating. Well, I'm not eating much, let's put it that way. And I said it in the, in the review, it was so expensive, they should lead the animal into the room and install it under the table so it can pleasure me while I eat. And the <laughs> general manager, brilliant guy called Dave Strauss, tweeted, notes taken, filleting cows en route to restaurant as we speak. Dave and I became very good friends. And he told me that they got an enormous number of bookings as a result of me 
pointing and laughing at these. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. A lot of people wanted to see what it was like. When you book a restaurant, do you book in your own name? For a while, I booked under the name Bassett. It was the surname of a fictional restaurant critic in a novel of mine. And I quite like the idea of the fictional restaurant critic emerging out into the world as a, to, to really review restaurants. Coming alive. Yeah, so Mark Bassett, he's pretty much been retired because I keep telling people about it in interviews like this. <laughs> I want to talk about backlash when things kick off because you're no stranger to controversy. You don't mind saying if something's shit. You don't mind calling people out even. No. What's the biggest backlash you've had from a review or an opinion? Well, I got well, one of them was here in, in Manchester. Manchester. Yeah. 2013, actually, 10 years ago. Okay. I reviewed Aidan Burns Manchester House. Now, the first six or seven paragraphs are basically um, a, a joyous hymn to the glory of Aidan Burns food. And it's all the other stuff that I get cross about the over engineered tables. Uh, the waiters dressed like they're workers in an Ancoats mill from 19, uh, 1873. Cocktails called things like the Stone Roses. I mean, if you imagine a London restaurant, London House opening with cocktails called the Kinks and waiters dressed as pearly kings and queens, you'd just be Hello, governor. banging your head on the table. And, yeah. I, and it, I just said it was just so bloody Manchester. And what I meant by that was this need to add bells and whistles that were unnecessary. That has passed, I have to say. But that phrase, it's just so bloody Manchester, drove this city nuts. Okay. Oh, yes. look at that, Jesus. Thank you for you. Yeah. Hope you're hungry still. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. That's Thank massive. You. I mean, we don't do it by half. I mean, I don't know, what, are you meant to eat that or sacrifice somebody on just, it? Can I just say, your willpower is shockingly bad. Yeah, isn't it? Like one of the worst I've ever seen. Oh, that's very good. Now, one of the main reasons this is on sale, it's going to look good on Instagram. Yeah. Have you noticed a shift in that? More restaurants doing things that you know it's on there because someone's going to take a picture in Instagram? There is absolutely no doubt that a certain type of restaurant, when they hire a PR company, the PRs will say, we need an Instagrammable dish. Yep. Yeah, I always take photographs of all the food I eat during a review. I've seen your photos, Oh, Jay. yeah, my photos are appalling. They're awful. They're awful. <laughs> There is more than enough food porn on Instagram. Yeah. If you don't like my photographs, don't follow me. Language is your tool. Yeah, and you get to look at these really are pictures so that when I'm sitting writing the review, I can thumb it up on my phone and go, oh yeah, that's what was on the phone. So do you not make notes while you're eating? And mm, Very rarely. I kind of work on the basis that if you literally can't remember what was on the plate, that tells you almost everything you need to know about the dish. Unless one of my companions says something extremely witty or clever, and then I steal it without attribution, <laughs> which is the price they pay for me buying their lunch. So what's this, a list of your favourite Manchester places? Yeah. So I just reel off a bunch of names? Rattle it off and then we'll, we'll pick up any one at all. The restaurant at the Allen, very recent one, which yes. is the new hotel, yep. small plates. Brilliant, there weren't enough people there, I hope there are now. Erst, here in, or Erst. Erst is fabulous. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Faux Q. We all laugh at the name, but that Vietnamese place, their soft shell crab. You Brilliant. have to laugh at the name, though. If you don't, yeah. there's something wrong with you. Seoul Kimchi. Lovely yeah. Korean place over by the university. Uh, Bundabust. Obviously, they start in Leeds, but the big one here is terrific. Absolute winners. Um, the Sparrows. I mean, God. Car carbohydrate a go-go. Uh, <laughs> That's Yuzu. a name for a restaurant. Carbohydrate right a go-go. Yuzu. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, uh, Manchester Seafood. That brilliant... Chinese. Do you know Manchester Seafood? Yes, I do, where you can choose, you, you the, choose about the tanks. And, and yep. There is a lot happening in this city, and I like coming here, and I come here a lot. It's just a good city, isn't it? Yeah. I saw recently, and I quite enjoyed it, you speaking out about uh, Gordon Ramsay. He's got some new series on the television that he's produced, his own format, and it's very Gordon Ramsay. Oh, is he shouting at people and telling them they're idiots? He's shouting at people. What's the point? He doesn't make being hugely successful and hugely wealthy. He's a great cook. No question about what a talented chef he is. But he just made the whole business of being hugely successful look a, a lot of fun. He doesn't look like he's really enjoying himself. No, he looks p permanently pissed off. Yeah. I mean, Gordon Ramsay's opening a place in Manchester uh, in the next month or so, I think. But how do you think the current state of things are in this country? Not, not Manchester specifically, but it's the, the country. I mean, it's resulted in changes. You see it in Manchester. You've got to be 
hunting around to find somewhere open on a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. A lot of places now won't open till a Wednesday. True. They may only be open on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday evenings, or maybe they'll do Friday lunch. They're limiting what they do. The ambitious places have removed a la carte because they cannot execute it and are doing tasting menus. Well, look at Noma. Noma's just closed. They're saying it's well, uh, they're, they're going to close at the end of 2024. But that's a sign. That's a sign, isn't it? If, they're, if well, they can't make it work. That's a different thing. The, the very high end, where it costs 500 pounds a head for dinner, they haven't been sustainable for a long time. A lot of these places, their dirty secret. It's not much of a secret. Is that they're sustained on stagiaires, people, interns interning for free yeah. a couple of dozen of them and all those big name michelin three-star restaurants you've heard of those ones that top the world's 50 best list they are sustained on that and the flag has gone i'm saying you can't do this anymore so noma's agreed to start paying them which may explain why it's financially uh. unsustainable we asked some of our followers on instagram twitter facebook all right told them that we were going to be seeing you for a little cup yes, of coffee. Yes, you called me, you, you, you referred in the tweet to the UK's biggest restaurant critic, which some of them pointed out was a little personal. I mean, look, I, 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 I don't think they meant size. D did you not? Neil Whitaker, yeah. would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? A hundred duck-sized horses, because you can kick them out of the way. What do you foresee to be the next food trend? I do not foresee, because it's a mugs game. There'll be food, there'll be restaurants, there'll be people eating it. Because you're always wrong, and I don't know. I am, I am not Tiresias. This is a nice one. This is from someone that calls themselves Food Chambers. McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, Snog, Marry, Divorce. Oh, right. Snog, Marry, Divorce. I'm divorcing McDonald's. Not a fan. You've only given me three. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, all, right. all right, Jay. I'm divorcing McDonald's, I'm snogging KFC because it would make me feel dirty, but I'm marrying Burger King. Market chef Claire says, if you could eradicate one ingredient forever, what would it be? One ingredient that I'd happily not see again? Oh, that's a very good question. This is controversial because I don't actually mind it. I quite like it sometimes. Go on. But if I never had to play Russian roulette with beetroot ever again, that would be fine. When you get to a certain age, when your pee runs pink because you've eaten too much of it, you immediately think bladder cancer, and that's just not a good look. I'm glad we ate first yeah. before we got to these questions. Thank you for that. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure? I have no guilty pleasures. If you start feeling guilty about food, where do you stop? I genuinely, I, I, I do not, not feel easy. guilt about food. Why would you feel? Life is too, too short for guilt. I, I, I think guilt is insidious. I remember um, Daryl Hugh Fernley Whittingstall being asked that question, and his response was, oh, I sometimes put a Snickers in the fridge and have it with a pint of beer. And you think, you regard that as a guilty pleasure. And what's the rest of your life like? Are you wearing a wimple and praying three times a day? And last one, this is from William Crossley. He just wants a bit of advice on how to become a food critic. Oh, well, it's very, very simple. When you're a teenager, decide that you want to be a journalist. Uh, learn the skills of journalism and writing, slave away at them for at least 15 years, become really, really good, catch the eye of your editors so that when a, one of half a dozen spots on the national press becomes available, you are a potential candidate among perhaps 750 other people who will also be up for the job. There you go. There you go, William Crossley. I hope that sorts it out for you. An instant fix. I kind of mean it, actually. But it's a journalist job, it's a writing job, it's not something you can just cross the street and do. And I had covered everything from murders to the security services. I'd been a foreign correspondent. I'd done everything before that particular job came my way. And are you still glad that that happened? What, that I was offered the chance to go out to eat on somebody else's dime and write smart ass things about it? Yeah, on balance, I'm fine with it. Who's paying for this, by the way, aren't you? You are. So what's coming up next then, Jay? I know you've got restaurants to review in Manchester. Ooh, look Whoa, at that. Just looking at, or in the middle, look how gooey yeah, that stop is. Stop showing me this, I've got a restaurant to review today. I have a sextet. Yeah. I lead it, it's jazz pianist, uh, called the Jay Rayner sextet. It's my fault, so it's got my name on it. Of course it has. It's it's a whole bunch of chart hits. We didn't just have jazz influences, they were jazz. I'm thinking Matt Bianco, Sade, everything but the girl working with... My Italian with namesake. All of those. And we're playing a gig at Albert Hall above 
Albert Schloss. Yes, on I know March it well. the 16th. That's a beautiful, beautiful venue. Because it's big numbers in it's there. It's big numbers. Um, so please buy tickets. Uh, you can go to my website, jrainer.co.uk. It's all there. And other than the music and getting to see you on stage, what, what can the audience expect? Is it a party atmosphere? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. It, it's a lot of stories. It's not chin stroking, is no, it? No, there is no chin stroking. There are a lot of stories from my life in food, in journalism, um, growing up with a mother who was an agony aunt. The audience may not be old enough to remember her. I but am. Claire Rayner was... There were some filthy stories that emerged from this. <laughs> um, so I think we put a 14 plus on it, although I probably have let my kids come. But really, just some cracking music. I believe in giving people, showing people a really good time. And if there's one thing that people in Manchester love outside of food, it's music. In, indeed, and that's why it, it was absolutely clear to me. Even though I have to admit, getting a piano into Albert Hall is a nightmare. I can't tell you the cost, but we're doing it. Well, listen, I think it's going to be great. I'm going to come along and see you. Thank you for coming and having a little coffee with us. I know you said you weren't going to eat, but yeah, well, I little... checked it. it was yeah. But I hope you don't mind. I've got a little surprise for you. Is that a surprise I like? Well, you never know, especially with you, you could go mental. All right, let's, let's see. Go, just go check it out. Shall we? Come on, let's go. Can I take it home? <laughs>